If Francis Ngannou beats Anthony Joshua, in light of what just happened against Tyson Fury as well, I don't think people will ever look at boxing the same way as far as this heavyweight generation is concerned. And I think that's something that folks um, really don't acknowledge enough in the sense that people will completely revise what we've historically understood to be the case about this era of... Um, golden heavyweights uh, reviving the sport and that resurgence of a new era of fresh, hungry heavyweights who gave us great fights and really brought the sport back to life, that label will be removed instantly. Um, if Joshua loses to Ngannou, and given that Ngannou arguably beat Tyson Fury in enough people's eyes to warrant enough scepticism anyway, um, I felt Tyson Fury won the fight, but... I can make a case for Ngannou winning all the same. Um, but I do think it's worth considering that people will never look at this heavyweight generation the same way again if Tyson Fury, sorry, uh, if Francis Ngannou beats Anthony Joshua. Um, because they're the two pillars of this generation, notwithstanding Deontay Wilder. Um, those two and Deontay Wilder are the three constants throughout this story. Usyk was a late addition. Um, from around about 2019 onwards, or 2018, when I think he fought Chaz Witherspoon. But in terms of high-level opposition, um, that didn't happen until this decade, the 2020s, where he fought Chisora, and then he fought Joshua, and then what happened afterwards. But Deontay Tyson and Anthony have been the common denominator, so to speak, from start to finish. And if... Us sorry, not if Usyk, if Nganu beats two of those three pillars, arguably, as a boxing debutant um, in his first two professional fights, then I don't see how people will look, particularly in the casual domain, at this heavyweight generation the same way again. Um, I don't think it's particularly reasonable or objective to say that that will have no bearing whatsoever. Um, I think that's quite naive and inherently biased to a degree to uh, purport that sort of thing. But um, I think that realistically, it's difficult to gauge what should and shouldn't happen in terms of how many rounds the fight should go, how long it should last, because obviously styles make fights and whatnot. But if Ngannou even drops Anthony Joshua, and I know in heavyweight boxing, anyone can drop anyone. It's the inherent nature of the division. It's why it has the most appeal it does to the masses. It always has done inherently because big men hitting each other with leather is always going to result in fireworks. Um, notwithstanding the aforementioned, it's also worth considering that even if Ngannou were to lose to Joshua, and again, he lost to Fury, but that knockdown is the lasting impression people have of that fight in the casual domain particularly. Um... And if Ngannou drops Joshua and drops Fury, what that does for their stock values is going to fluctuate up and down in the long in the um, short term. But in the long term, that won't age well for this generation of heavyweight boxers. For two of your biggest pillars, AJ and Tyson, to have been put on the canvas by a guy who's older than both of they are, because then that would be the counter argument saying that They weren't in their primes anymore. Um, AJ and Tyson, I believe, are 33-ish, both of them. Francis is nearer to 40 than he is to 30, so um, he's not exactly a spring chicken either in boxing terms, but it won't age well in my view, and I don't think it's subjective or reasonable to say that it would have no impact or bearing whatsoever on how people see this heavyweight generation. Um, I think it will do, and so I don't think that it can be underestimated just how significant a loss um, for Anthony Joshua or to be knocked down by Ngannou would be. Um, because at the end of the day, this will completely reframe how people see boxing in the casual domain. And given that the perception is currently that MMA is catching up to boxing in terms of global audience and retention anyway, um, this leans into that argument. And um, at the heavyweight end, which is arguably the premier end, uh, the premier, uh, the premier end, um, because it attracts the most attention, I think that's where things could go quite pear-shaped for boxing's reputation. So, 
Um, on that note, I wanted to put this video out before um, in case Nganu does beat Joshua, um, but I don't see how um, this wouldn't have disastrous consequences for how the legacy of this heavyweight generation ages um, and how people view the fighters in retrospect, how the likes of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury are then viewed historically. Um, I don't think they'd be held in the same acclaim as they presently are. Um, and in terms of all-time great lists, um, I don't think either of them would feature all that too highly if Nganu goes and does this, because it will reframe what we've traditionally understood um, to be a breath of fresh air with a good generation of new heavyweights on the scene that have brought life back to the division. It'll put into perspective... Um, just how good they were after all if a debutante came in and um, put either two of them on the canvas who were the premier pillars of this era or let's say Anthony Joshua loses lost to Nganu as well but in either event um, curious to hear your thoughts and um, let's have a back and forth in the uh comments and discuss. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns, just tweet them over to me. That's at ElusiveRaf on Twitter. If you guys want to see my daily fight analysis uploads, I upload those every day to Instagram and that's at Elusive 2.0 on Instagram.